Ali radiyallahu an or Aisha radiyallahu anha said two old Jewish women entered my house one time in Medina because they were neighbors and they said to me the people of the grave get punished inside their graves so I said to them you are lying this is not true people in their graves don't get punished then they left then the Prophet Sallallahu entered and I said, Ya Rasulullah, two old women from the Jews came to me and said, the people of the grave get, are getting punished in their graves. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Sadaqata, innahum yu'adhabuna adhaban tasma'uhu al-baha'im. They spoke the truth, those two Jewish women. The people of the grave who are getting punished, they get punished until the animals can hear them. So the human beings and the jinns can't hear them, but the animals can hear them every now and then. She said, I never saw the Prophet ﷺ after that day. In prayer or after prayer, except that he would be seeking refuge in Allah from the punishment of the grave. I don't mean to scare you, but it is our deeds which inevitably decide what the status of our graves are going to be like. Either a garden from the gardens of paradise or a pit from the pits of hellfire. So the Prophet ﷺ himself is to say, "A'udhu billahi min adab al Oh my Lord, I seek your protection from the punishment of the grave. And this is what we should be doing as well. One day, the Prophet ﷺ, he himself saw a dream. And when the prophets see a dream, it's absolutely true from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no doubt. They either see from Allah or nothing. Different to us. And he said, Atani atini layla. This night, last night, someone came to me in my dreams, meaning angels. They came to me too. And they took me into the skies, into the life of the barzakh, into another world of the dead, the world of the dead. It doesn't say the world of the dead, but Prophet ﷺ means here that he took him to the world of the unseen. And it is the world of the dead. Soon you'll see how, what I mean. He said, we reached a place. I saw before me a man who was lying down on the floor. On his back. And there was another man, a big man holding a huge stone. He would come up to this man lying on the floor and he'd throw the stone onto his head and it'd crush his head and the stone, stone roll, would roll away. The man would go to pick up the stone and by the time he comes back to the, to, to the person on the ground, his head has been restored and he'd crush it again. The stone would roll away and he'd keep doing that over and over. So I asked them, who is this man on the floor and why is that other man doing this to him? They said to me, move on, move on. Don't ask questions, keep going. He said, then we moved on. Then we passed by a man who had a, a, a hook, a, a brass hook in the front of his hands. Or actually, a, a man who was sitting down. And there was another man behind him who had a brass hook. And he would place the hook on the front of his face from his mouth and he would rip his mouth and eyes and, and, and half of the face to his ear. Then he would come to the other side of his face and rip his other side of his face to the other ear. When he'd go to the other side, the first side is restored. Then he'd do the same to the restored side and then the other side is restored and then he'd do it again. And he'd keep on doing that over and over again. The Prophet ﷺ asked, who is this person and why is that other man doing this to him? They said, move on, move on. He said, I reached a man who was swimming in, an, in, a, in, a, in a lake which looked like blood. And there was another man at the, on the edge. He had stones in his hands. The man would swim to the, to the other man. The other man would put stones into his mouth and he would have to swallow them and carry them across. And he would bring them out on the other side and he would come back, swim back, take another stone, put it on the other side and continuously do that. He said, why is this man doing this and who is the other man? He said, move on. They said, move on, move on. He said, we reached 
a place. He said, I saw men and women who were naked inside of a, what looked like a tannur. Tannur is like in the olden days, this oven. They used to use these ovens to bake in their bread and stuff. Tannur is very deep and hollow and it has fire un underneath it, very hot in there. He said, I saw men and women in a huge tannur, huge, as much as the eye could see. And they were hanging in there. And the fire would burn from underneath and burn them. And they would all scream. And the fire would come back. Then it would burn them and all scream and come back. He said, who are these people and why is this happening to them? They said, move on, move on. He said, I reached and saw a man so tall that I could look up and I could barely see his face. But he was beautiful. And he had a white beard. And around him were children. Lots and lots of children in a beautiful garden. He said, who is this and who are these children? They said, move on, move on. He said, we moved on. And I saw a group of people, a group of men and women, people. One side of their body, of their face, was the most handsomest and beautiful that I've ever seen. And the other side of their face and body was the most gruesome and ugliest I've ever seen. Then they'd walk to a river and they'd bathe in it and then the side that was ugly was restored to be as beautiful as the other side. And so they were completely beautiful as I've ever seen. I asked, who are these people and why is this happening to them? The angel said, move on, move on. He said, I came to a man, this big man. And his face was the most hideous and ugliest I have ever laid eyes on. And he didn't smile. I asked, who is this person? And they said, move on, move on. Finally, as the dream was almost over, I turned to my companions and I said, this night I have seen many strange things. Can you explain them to me? And they told him, the first person that was having a man crushing his head is either, we don't know the exact of Syria, either an example or it is real but with nevertheless this is what will happen or what it is happening to the person who dies before the day of judgment he said that was a man who used to deliberately sleep past his duties his prayers his head is too heavy to get up for his prayers and so he is being punished like this until the day of judgment the second person who were having hooks ripping their sides of their faces to their ears said these are the people who used to spread lies about other people. Walk out of their home and spread lies about this person and that person, rumors, lies. And they'd carry on information without making sure if it's true and they carry it about the other people ruining their lives and their reputations. Namima. It's called Namima. Yamshi bin Namima walking in rumors and gossiping about other people. So it's being ripped. This is punishment till the day of judgment. The third person who was swimming and having these stones, he said, ذَلِكَ أَكِلُ riba. He is the person who consumes interest, riba, usury. Yani he is not in need. It's not a necessity for them to consume riba or to, to take it or to, or to give it. And they did it. So, they are being punished this way until the day of judgment. What's going to happen is going to be worse. He said, the people that were in the tanur, in that big huge oven underneath and screaming from the heat, were the adulterers and adulteresses, fornicators and fornicatresses of this ummah, of this nation. As for the people who had one side beautiful and the other side ugly and they would wash from the river and they would be restored he said these are the people these are the people whose good deeds weren't enough sorry to make them enter jannah so they have burnt for their bad deeds and then they are saved from the fire or they will be saved from the fire and they will cleanse themselves from this river in jannah and they'll be restored as for the tall man that you saw with children around him, that is Prophet Ibrahim And those children are the children of believers and non-believers who died 
before the age in which the sayyat are placed upon them for the age of maturity as for the man who you saw was hideous and didn't smile then this is malik the angel guardian of the fire of hellfire he has never smiled since the day the fire hellfire was created by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the guardian who makes sure the people of hellfire are being tortured for their choice of going against allah and refusing his message but these are examples of the things that are happening or will happen in the life of the barzakh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from those punishments. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen.